about how to be in the society. Removing all the unnecessary things, which society thinks necessary for cooperating with the life, and adding all the necessary things, necessary things, really to cope up with the life. I experimented, very proudly say, the experiment was successful. Now I can see the kids who completed the education in our schools, when they go to the highest study, those school teachers are just three days before. One of our uh, ashram went to attend the parent teachers meeting in a very big international residential school in Bangalore where our kids are studying for higher education, where the kids in our, from our Gurukul, after completing the basic studies in our Gurukul, they are there in that school for higher education. The teachers are saying, we are terrified by the intelligence of your kids. This is a straight word they use. We are terrified by the intelligence. Your kids are radiating. Not just memory. Not just memory. I was working in two, three angles on the energy level. Another one important thing, awakening the non-mechanical parts of the brain. See, in Vedic tradition, we have something called awakening the non-mechanical parts of the brain. Just because you took birth, there will be one part of your brain which will be active. 13% of your brain will be active. Just because your lungs need to function, heart needs to function, liver needs to function, and the intestine needs to function. This is the mechanical part of the brain. But only by the initiation, proper spiritual techniques, the non-mechanical parts of the brain, the other 87% can be awakened. That is why anybody who is initiated, whose non-mechanical parts of the brain is awakened, is called Vija, reborn. In our Vedic tradition, somebody receives the initiation, he is called reborn, the Vija. Because just because of your physical body, human body, the brain which is activated is only 13%. If you intentionally work and activate the remaining part, then not just your mind, your whole body enters into a new space. It's practically a river. It's practically a river. That's why in our tradition we have the word reborn. I really doubted, will we be able to do this big job, which our tradition speaks, beautifully our tradition has, we have a very beautiful syllabus, the Vedic tradition, till the age of seven, the kids will not be taught any numbers, only the visualization will be continuously awakened, no verbalization, and after seven, the child will be initiated. Every day it will be made to meditate for some time. And then the verbalization, the logical things will be taught. You see, when logical things are added into your system, like numbers and verbalization, your system goes through a very kind of a driving in Chennai rose. What your car goes through. The same kind of experience happens inside your system. If little meditation is added, it's almost like lubricating. Taking care of the kids, not being hurt or harmed by logic and numbers. But unfortunately, the modern day education system has given too much of importance to logic and numbers and there is no lubrication system. There is no self-healing system. I can say, if you can somehow remove maths and the logical training you give and the exam fear you put in the kids between 7 to 14, there will not be terrorists in the planet here and politicians too. <laughs> All right. It is that, it's almost giving them teeth in the stomach. See, growing teeth in the stomach, you just start eating you. Too much of logic. Without lubrication, when it gets added into your system, 
the reasonless depression gets developed. You can see, when you get up early morning, for no reason you feel the whole thing is heavy. Muscles are heavy, whole body is heavy, you don't know why you want to get out of the bed. The causeless, reasonless depression is just because of the mental setup which grew out of logic and numbers. If some way we can add lubrication system along with our education, along with our regular thing, kids will grow without losing their visualization. Okay, now it's like a, you sell your visualization to buy verbalization. It's almost like sell your eyes and buy paintings. Sell your sleep and buy cart. Sell your legs and learn dancing. Wrong bargain. Start and try the system. I was really doubting will it work. But I can now say probably it really works. <laughs> many things, many things are added, many things are removed. In our Gurukul system, how we run our Gurukulams in Bangalore Ashram. Our traditional Gurukul system, by the age of seven, they are initiated into meditation and yoga. And side by side, along with the logic, the visualization is also kept alive. When both of them are kept alive, kids grow as a complete being and they are given Upanishad ideas. As per the Gurukulam tradition, by the age of 40, they should be initiated either the Brahma Sutra or Kama Sutra. The Guru will decide. If he is going to become a sannyasi, he will be initiated into Brahma Sutra. If he is going to be a Rajasthan, he will be initiated into Kama Sutra. From 7 to 14, sorry, from 14 to 21, they have to study Brahma Sutra or Kama Sutra. By 21, the master will decide. The person who studied Brahma Sutra will be radiating Jivan Mukti and he will become. Sanyasi. The person who studied Kama Sutra, he will be filled with the life and joy to create, to live a beautiful Grihastha life. He will be given in marriage, he will be married. A beautiful civilization was created. That is the way our Guru system was functioning. We are trying to work on the 7 to 14 age. Of course, 14 to 21, I don't think we are going to take up now. We don't have facility for that. We are now going to work on only 7 to 14, awakening the non-mechanical parts of the brain, adding more intelligence, memory power, above all, not just employable, livable. We produce employable kids, but not livable. See, many of our kids, you can't live with them. That's what is happening. You yourself can't live with them. You reproduce. You brought them up. But you can't live with them. They become non-livable. Non-friendly. Some uh, computers say user-friendly. Same day. They become non-friendly. Many things are not... Especially in the modern day. The amount of information put in their head without allowing them to digest. And the modern day kids like life is almost like just the other day on uh, Bollywood celebrity was talking to me. He said, Swamiji, our field is too strong. The celebrity status are just dumping the dustbin. Anything is too strong, it's very difficult to manage. I said, the stress which I see in your uh, system, the same stress I see in the tenth, the tenth and the child. Actually, the same stress level, the energy, I could see in the tenth kid. Life is almost like a celebrity for our kids. Either you are up or down. It's too much. Our kids are growing old too young. They are losing the childhood days. I feel so fortunate. I am born and brought up in a small village. Thirunavari was a village those days. And to a very middle class parents. I really feel proud and happy. 
I am born to middle class parents who are not that sensitive about the world and ways of the world and will not put me in the rat race in the beginning. Lot of things. Actually, because we torture the kids by putting them into the rat race, they dump us in the old age homes. <laughs> it's just revenge. It's just revenge. We are worthy of what we are going through. We are worthy of what we are going through. Because we don't give attention. We are not understanding what we are doing to our kids. You see, kids doesn't need to go through so much of stress even to memorize information. They don't need to. Because in those days, you see our ancient Vedic masters and pandits. That's a beautiful story. One guy from one king who came to conquer India was requested by his master to bring all the Vedas and a sannyasi. So, uh, this guy collects all the Vedas and the Vedas and comes something like a 270 ships got filled, still not even three Vedas got loaded. There's one more. He says, no, we can't build any more ships. He approached the master. What can I do? My master wanted the whole Vedas. What can I do? Just laughed and said, fool, just take four Brahmins, that's all. <laughs> they will repeat the whole thing. The palm leaves which can't be contained in 270 ships. Just one Brahmin is enough. He will repeat the whole thing. How are they able to manage? So much of memory for that. See, just till 70, 80 years, years before, the whole thing was in their memory only. Memory. Only 70, 80 years before, it got, it, uh, we started printing it. You will be shocked. You will be shocked. The whole Mahabharata, 100,000 slogas. Still, the Mahabharata is the longest epic, longest poem written in the planet Earth. 100,000 slogas. It was in their memories. It was not written. Maybe few hundred years before, it was in the palm leaf form. Now it is in the book form. But it was not in the memory. So, as per the Vedic tradition, kids does not need to go through so much of torture even for memorizing. Even for memorizing. So all these ideas, I had this, all these ideas in a very random way. I had a deep passion. How to go about? But I can't use outside kids as guinea pigs and experiment with my ideas. So I collected all my ashram kids. All the people who dedicated their life for Jnana Peter, the 56 kids, I worked, giving them sattvic food, giving them initiation, and giving them yoga and meditation and Upanishad chanting, simple chanting, nothing much is required. Simple chanting, 20-30 minutes, awakens the non-mechanical parts of the brain. Just awakens the non-mechanical parts of the brain. We did a research on that Saraswati Bija Mantra, and the Saraswati Bija Mantra is chanted, Suddenly your whole visualization part gets lit up, lit up for 300%. Nothing else, the I am is a Saraswati Bija. If your grandfather tells, chant this mantra, you will have more intelligence, we will laugh at him. But the scientific research says, just that I am, I am, I am, the Bija being chanted, the visualization part of your brain lifts up 300% more. Like these simple techniques, we are not making the kids to do Shirasasana, Tapsi Tari, nothing. These simple techniques and the lifestyle without TV, a clear tight routine and proper physical movements. However, whenever I find time, I go and spend a little time with them. Whatever, we are very successful in doing what I really want to do. Apart from giving their regular education, without any stress, we were able to do many things. Of course, if we are able to keep them with us between 14 to 21, we may work, we may expect Jivan Muktas out of it. But not at least we have kids who have Jivan Mukti mental setup with which they start their life. The mental setup of Jivan Mukta. Many of our kids' parents, you ask our kids, any counselling or problem solutions. 
Many of our Gurukul kids' parents, they come to our kids, their kids, their kids, and ask for solutions. What do you think for this problem? <laughs> they just say, this is what Swamiji will tell. This is what Swamiji will answer. They were able to get the mental setup of Jivan Mukti. Then I decided we should be able to reproduce. Unless you are able to reproduce, the system will not be alive. It will be always just a small group and people will never understand it's a success of a system. They will under, they only think it's a success of Vityananda, individual person. But I personally feel it's not the success of person, it's the success of a system. The Vedic system. And it has produced thousands of people like me and it is going to produce thousands of people like me. It is not the success of me, it is the success of the system. So I felt it's time to reproduce, create this system everywhere the same way, like without TV. Without TV means don't think that people will not, kids will not know the life, they know everything. At reducing the unnecessary load on their system, on their eyes, or on their brain, just reducing the stress level, many things adding the right things like yoga, meditation, chanting, these great life solution ideas, apart from that, giving the ambience. Giving the ambience where they see right people. Where teachers are also living as Jivan Muktas. That is the best thing. Teachers are also spiritual seekers. So sharing this kind of ambience. I thought, if we can reproduce all this, naturally we can reproduce this mental setup. And we already started few schools in few places like Vadaseri and many other places are almost getting ready. Then as usual, we always take a quantum jump. We don't stop. With the one, two, or one, two, three, we decided let's take up a big project of reproducing this Jivan Mukti mental setup. And one more reason why I wanted the schools in large numbers. Tell you honestly, repairing a old building as per Vastu takes too much of time than building a new building. <laughs> Almost all the people with whom I am working to create Jivan Mukti civilization, it's almost like a repairing a old building. As per Vastu, break this side, break that side, add this side, add this side, remove the plumbing, do new electrification, too much of work, too much of energy. Of course, it's not that I'm going to stop my Vastu consultancy and <laughs> my plumbing and re repairing work. I'm going to continue to do that job. The planet Earth immediately needs at least few thousand Jivan Muktas. I decided better let us build. New buildings means kids. Kids are the right people. We need immediately at least few thousand Jivan Muktas to radiate this Jivan Mukti Vinyana, the science of Jivan Mukti. I decided working with kids is the best way to create more and more beings who carry the mental setup of this Jivan Mukti, mental setup of this living enlightenment. So we decided to start a project, 108 schools with each school with 1000 kids. Each school will be able to handle 1000 kids. By this Vijay Dasmi, 21 schools will be launched means up and running. You may think how. You will see, you will do it. <laughs> and by next Guru Purnima, 2010 July, 54 schools will be up and running. Of course, mostly we are planning in rented buildings. That is why we are working in this field. 70 places already we got properties donated by people like a land, 
to start a school, but we are not going to start the start in our own properties immediately. We are going to start only in rented building. First one year or two year, I wanted the schools to run in the rented building so that we will know how much we are successful in that locality. Then shift to the our own property. Only then we are going to spend money on construction. As of now, we are not going to spend money on construction. We are going to only spend money in training the teachers and imparting this education. Six hours they will have their regular curriculum, like math, science and everything. Two and a half hours they will have yoga, meditation and these life solution ideas. I am personally going to sit ten days with the teachers. When I come back from here, I am allotting ten days to spend with this now 21 schools. Almost 210 teachers will be having. At least 10 teachers per school, I am saying. At least. If it is more than that, maybe 300 or 400 teachers will be having. We are going to train them. Not only they will be living this idea of Jivan Mukti, living enlightenment, they will be able to reproduce that mental setup. I tell you honestly. Kids don't learn from what we say, they learn from what we do. So I am trying. The teachers themselves will radiate this concept in their body language. They themselves will live enlightenment. They themselves will practice along with the kids. My teachers will sit and do Nityatyam. Teachers will sit and meditate. Even teachers will do chanting. So we are planning. The teachers themselves will practice these great truths. So that naturally it will radiate in the lives of the kids. By 12, 12, 12, all the 108 schools are expected to be up, running, with 1000 kids each school. By 12, 12, 12, if you are already associated with Jnana Pita, you will not have a doubt because <laughs> we work only, only in this field. Immediately the schools we are going to start the, the this Navaratri Ijayadasmi, all the 21 schools will be in rented properties. Of course, I am uh, talking a very conservative way, it is not just 21, it is going to be more than 40. But I am planning at least 21 will be up and running. Because 36 schools, our women's swing has taken, the, taken charge. Almost all of them are already headmasters, are, uh, already teachers. They have taken the responsibility. And the Salem organization, Janapina, they have taken the responsibility of 25 schools. So you need half of the commitments are fulfilled. We will have at least 21 schools by this Navaratri. When I come back, we are going to have a separate teacher's training. And of course, the next thing which I want to do, start a teacher's training program for 10 days, which I will be personally conducting. Any education institution which accepts the necessity of the Dharma in human life, please understand, not just religion, not just actually real secularism means, take the truths of all religions and live, not reject the truths of all religion and live. We have done we are living pseudo secularist way. In the name of secularism, we throw away all the truths, all religions. But real secularism should have been picking up the Dharma from all religions, picking up the spiritual truths from all religions and imbibing it. So it will be basically the essence of all religions, the spiritual science. Any institution, any spiritual institution, which feels the necessity of the spiritual dharma or the enlightenment science in the lives of human beings can send their teachers, we will train them free. Program. They are launching freely. So there are thousands of education institutions which are really feeling the need, feeling the need of the spiritual Please understand, all over the world, 
Our Indians are successful not because of anything else, just because of our emotional and spiritual strength. Please understand, this statement is going to be losing its value from this generation. The success is happening because still the last generation, whether you know it or not, the science was reproduced in you by the very bring, way of bringing up. Your grandfather would have told, grandmother would have told Ramayana story, Mahabharata story. All these stories have entered into your system. The self-healing thoughts. I did a study. All the developed countries, from maybe six, seven countries, 66% of their population take some form of psychiatric drugs to maintain their day in a balanced way. Please understand, 6, 6, 66 percent, 3 people are sitting, 2 are taking psychiatric drugs to maintain their day to day life. They are called borderline personalities. If you are from that field, you know that word. It's a very popular word, borderline personalities. Means if they don't take psychiatric drugs that day, the medicines that day, they will not be able to run their life, run their day. They will be screaming, shouting, what do you call, uh, temporary insanity. They will go through the temporary insanity. They will do even criminal acts. Now in the US, 33% of court cases are rejected without giving any punishment because of this temporary insanity problem. Means 33% of criminal acts are happening if they don't take medication on that day. Many companies and industries are ensuring that they take medication inside the campus. <laughs> you are supposed to get into the campus and take the medicine. You can't say, I took it in the house. Please understand, we are going towards the same civilization in a high speed way. I don't know the right word. I don't know what speed we are heading. We are heading towards that civilization. We are heading towards a big danger, very big danger. Fortunately, take your generation, you all had, you all had some form of the spiritual support. I, when I heard all this information, I did a research. What is exactly unique about Indian mental setup? All over the world, I go and conduct meditation programs. I think all of you may be aware. Even today night, I'm flying after this meeting, I'm flying to Canada. And I'll be back, back in, in India only in number 15. All over the world I'm conducting many meditation workshops. I did a research. Taking the photograph of the mind, half an hour, letting them write whatever comes inside. I want you to know the truth. The Indians who are brought up with a very traditional atmosphere, they have more than 72% of self-healing thoughts only 20% of depressing thoughts, the remaining are that you can't analyze. Just simple, the best thoughts. Please understand. Such big number, self-healing thoughts, when I say self-healing thoughts, what do I mean? No. The ability to recover, if you face the suffering, danger, disturbance, some problem, the ability to recover, if you have the thoughts inside, built, like, oh, it's okay, all, everything is Maya, God will take care, this is the way life will be. These are the thoughts, ideas I call self-healing thoughts. Ability to recover. The Westerners, when I did the research in Americans, mental setup, taking the photograph, only 20% are self-healing thoughts. More than 70 are depressive thoughts, and 10% you can't diagnose. Just some loose, vague thoughts. Please understand. I, thought, I started thinking, how come so much of self-healing thoughts are inside our system? From the young age, whether you want it or not, all these ideas are put into your head. Like Ramayana, Mahabharata, some story, Margandeya, Pragalata. All these ideas are put inside your head. And somehow, whether you want it or not, you will be made to visit temples. So some of these ideas get into your system, 
and he's, especially if you are from villages, even if you don't want, there will be loudspeaker in the evening. It will be shouting, some old man will be sitting and shouting, some Bhagavatam or Puranam or something, some ideas. All these ideas get into your system, whether you want it or not. So the self-healing thoughts, number of self-healing thoughts is high in our mental setup because of very tradition. But this generation in outside India, this generation outside India does not have that facility. They are all coming back, looking for that mental setup. Not only outside India, where are you talking about outside India? In, in India, I classify people as two categories. One, non-residential Indians. There are many outside India, but still they live so much of our tradition and culture. Non-residential Indians. There are second category, residential non-Indians. <laughs> many sitting here, geographically, but no, culturally or spiritually, I always tell people, India, it's not just geography, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Understand? Just because I am traveling all over the world, I know how fortunate I am to take birth in an Indian village. An Indian village. How fortunate I am. There are so many small things which you think are very small are too big with a global standard. Still in South Africa, still in South Africa, if you have the title Patel, surname Patel, banks will not ask for guarantee. Because Gujaratis don't declare bankruptcy. Patels, they don't declare bankruptcy. It's their religion. It's their religion. Honesty. Anywhere in USA, go. The, where, if the Indian settlement means crime free zone. Anywhere. I am enjoying the respect. Wherever I go, in US or any country, Indian settlement means that city mayor, ML, whoever the politicians, everybody will come and receive. They always say, Swamiji, your community is such a peaceful community. <laughs> All these things are because of our Vedic background. And another one important thing, we have a wonderful name in the international standard for maintaining a stable family. Still, more than 90% of Indians live and die with one wife or one husband, one spouse. <laughs> no, we may be fighting from morning till night. <laughs> that is different. But we live with one person. More than 90%. More than 90%. We live with one means stable family. That is why our kids achieve so much. If you are, if you see the international level. See, Indian kids means high expectation because our kids are, they have a stable family background. There are so many wonderful gifts which you don't even know are from very tradition. You just take it for granted. So many wonderful gifts. Forget it, not only just the mental setup, even body. See, 20 hours per day I work. I'm traveling continuously. Still I fly in economy. 100,000 miles I fly per year. 100,000 miles I fly. 100,000 kilometers I drive in the road per year. The body is cooperating just because I always feel in an Indian village, my aircraft flight is too big. A flight itself is too big. Forget about this economic business class. So this mental setup. Vehicle itself is too much. Having your own private vehicle itself is too much. Forget about traveling. Thousands of people are waiting to see. This mental setup which creates your body. If that is set in a, actually in our Indian village, what standard is set? That's what I call the Indian standard. If that standard mental setup, if we can create kids, they will do wonders. All over the world I am seeing. All our successful entrepreneurs, successful business people, successful politicians, all of them fortunately have Indian mental village setup, Indian village mental setup. In many ways, I am giving you just one example. I am giving you just one example. Indian village mental setup. All I am trying to do is reproduce one more thing. Till your generation, 
the system, the knowledge was transmitted, the ideas got transmitted. Because there was so systematic transmission, you are not able to do that to your next generation. Try your best to make your kids to sit just for 15-10 minutes, puja or homa, during Gala Pravesa or some program. Come on, try! It doesn't work out. Because you don't have a system to transmit. You don't have a system to transmit. Here, I'm trying to reproduce that mental setup. Mental setup and setting up a standard. Setting up a clear standard. The standard of, you see, the I, what you call as life, what you call as joy, what you call as suffering, what you call as guilt, what you call as death, all these ideas, these ideas play major role in the way in which you take decisions and the way in which you think. Why you think, how you think. These concepts play a major role. Fortunately, we are able to reproduce the proper concepts into the kids when they are very young through this proper system, the proper educating system and giving, giving them the ambience where all these, you see, you know, if you talk to our Gurukul kids, even a philosopher in PhD will not know so much. A PhD, a person who has done PhD in philosophy will not know so much. These kids will be straight because they are in ambience, what is a Tamil scholar? Not only they will be employable, they will be livable. They will be livable. The ultimate aim of Vidyananda Vidyalaya is first to create the Jivan Mukti mental setup. And they will be employable. One more thing, they have memory power. Amazing memory power. I could see in our Gurukul kids. They have memory power. All the people who brought the kids and dumped in our Gurukul, mainly our ashram is only. Almost they all dumped because they are not even doing it. But the way in which these guys are flowering and learning, it's not that we don't restrict them or we don't train them or teach them. They go through every process and I have a very strict principle. Everything they go through. But somehow, the ambience and these ideas Gives them such a strong base, they really excel in both the fields, the inner field, inner world, and the outer world. So I really feel honestly, by 12, 12, 12, per year, 100,000 kids will be given this Jivan Mukti mental setup. The lifestyle of Jivan Mukti. 100,000 kids means 100,000 families. Because if your kid, if your child comes and asks you the question about the Upanishad, what will you do? <laughs> I'll teach you through your kids. That's what I decided. I am not able to teach to your kids through you. That's what I decided to do. I'll teach you through your kids. They will come and talk to you about Upanishads. They will come and talk to you about spirituality. They will come and talk to you about self-healing. They will come and talk to you about healing thoughts. They will come and tell you about life solutions. I have seen many of our kids, when they go home, that's what they are doing in the house. Solving the problem between father and mother. <laughs> giving them counseling. Teaching them life solutions. And giving them encouragement. No, no, all these things will be solved. Swamiji will take care. And that is what our kids are doing. I could see very clearly. So it is time we save the planet Earth through proper, not only employable, livable education. Not just education, I really feel the whole thing should be consciousness based. The whole thing should be consciousness based. See, the problem of the planet Earth is not that we don't have enough things. We have enough for eating, staying, Clothes and medical care of the whole 620 crore people on the planet Earth. Now 620 are 40. 
<laughs> with all increasing continuously. Anyway, almost 6 and 11 part. They have enough of food, clothes, shelter, medical care, everything. We can, even if you don't have one or two things, we can create. We have everything for all the 6 and 11 part crores, whatever, population. The problem is not, not our GDP. The problem is people who are guiding the country's society's civilization. We need little more awareness in them. See, there are so many countries dumping grains and food into the ocean to maintain the market price. There are so many countries dying without food. So, necessity, the immediate need is not more production. The immediate need is more awareness. More awareness. So if you need, if you think you need to save the planet Earth, add more consciousness and create more conscious beings. We need more conscious beings, more sensitive beings, more intelligent beings. It is, we don't need immediately. Our immediate problem is not all about production. We have too much. We have. The immediate need is more awareness. So, the one and only way is to create more and more kids, at least next generation, based on consciousness. Conscious based education is the only way to solve the problem. Not only that, conscious based education only is going to support the spiritual strength of our civilization, please understand, if India dies, world will become spiritually empty. Because each civilization has contributed something to the planet Earth. Some civilizations have contributed political setups. Greek, if you see the Greek history, they experimented with all political setups. Something like 400 political setups they experimented. So you can say the democracy is a gift from them. They experimented, experimented, experimented and gifted the final r &D. Same way, there are some civilizations, German civilization, work so much on medicine. And the, all the great achievements, contributions in the medical field is from German civilization. So each civilization has contributed something as their unique product to the planet Earth. Jivan Mukti, spirituality is our unique product to the planet Earth. I want all of you to know there is an international survey done by a magazine, spiritual magazine, the international survey. The top 40 gurus whom people approach for physical, mental, spiritual healing and um, emotional balancing for all their inner world problems. The top 40 people, I, just like top 10, top, uh, 10 people, top 40 gurus. The top 40, 32 are Indian gurus. In fact, India is the Jagat Guru. India is the Jagat Guru. Please understand, India is respected all over the world, not because of our politicians or celebrities. India is respected all over the world, just because of our spiritual personalities. We don't know the broad part of us, they are not agonizing. India is respected just because of spiritual personalities. In US alone, yoga and meditation is six billion dollar industry. Six billion dollar industry. Seventy-three percent of Americans believe the Vedic truths like reincarnation, karma theory, and necessity for the Guru, all these great truths. You understand the amount of work contribution our Vedic civilization did, amount of the work done by our masters. I am only afraid, I may not be able to tell all these things privately for the next generation. I do not want that to happen. Let us not produce more RNIs, residential non-Indians. <laughs> Almost all your kids are RNIs, residential non-Indians. There are many kids coming to me for healing. Then every day, all of you know that I am doing the Kalpadar program and so many other programs. 
last 40 days per day average 10,000 people are having darshan. Somewhere. Maybe 2,000, 3,000 only are culpable. But otherwise, the other, wherever I am raising the flags and public satsangs, 10,000 people. When I see our kids, 15, 16 year old kids, they carry such a depth of depression, which usually 60, 70 year old men will carry. The tiredness about life. Feeling like, ah, it's okay, we are done. It's too much. It is too much. That's the reason I decided. My work is not only to break the old buildings as per Vastu and correct and <laughs> do the plumbing electrification and produce better buildings. It is time we start constructing new buildings also. So, hereby I launch this project to create enlightened civilization on the planet Earth in the name of Nityananda Vidyalaya. Just few ideas.